And what they've done by artificially forcing rates to unnatural levels is they've, they've instituted a, a complete new round of misallocation of scarce capital because the cost, the opportunity cost, uh, uh, you know, of doing something that was maybe marginally economic with rates at 4 or 5 percent, uh, uh, suddenly it doesn't look nearly as risky when rates are at uh, 1 percent or 2 percent. So this, this, this reinforces this reinforces bad choices. This reinforces corruption. This reinfor and by driving rates to zero, what it what it also does is it is it trivializes it trivializes labor, it trivializes saving, it trivializes smart asset allocation, and 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 it reinforces poor spending choices, government profligacy because government. Governments are less inclined to get their spending in order or to get their finances in order when, when you make the cost of borrowing a lot cheaper. And this is what we've seen in spades all around the world. So this has made the world a much sicker place than it needed to be or than it ever was. You see, you see what it, because what it really comes down to, uh, at that point in time, uh, Dunnigan, the, the, the world was suffering from too much debt. And by making interest rates lower across the board, because the U.S. stands as the world reserve currency and the reference rate for all currencies around the world, and what, what this did was it encouraged uh, debt-leading countries all around the world to, to go out and borrow more and initiate new rounds of spending. Absolutely. I was just thinking as you spoke of how that played out on a microscopic scale at our house. We had purchased a new vehicle at uh, a few years back and got an amazing rate of 2.49% on it. We thought, wow, this is just historically low. Nobody's ever gotten that low of a interest rate for a new car. And then two years later, uh, they came out with a 0% for, for a longer period of time. And so we traded in our 2 and 2.49% low car loan and got a zero point and I thought to myself absolutely as we went at that what are they going to do next time if people are willing to take on more debt at zero percent where do you go from there well where where do you go from there uh to give you I'll, I'll give you an idea where you go from there um i believe there's a there's a new law that's just been tabled in switzerland uh where where they're where they're talking about uh instituting a new law where people will be guaranteed a monthly stipend of uh, uh, the equivalent of 2,000, uh, or for each family unit will be guaranteed uh, a, a monthly stipend of $2,600 a month. And I think, I, I, and as I read it, uh, I think it equated to something around $62,000 a year, roughly ballpark. I mean, so so basically, you go from you go from having zero money to you have to having outright free money, where they just hand it to you. And this, this, I guess you could, you could, you could sort of wrap up in, 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 in conceptually in the whole, in the whole notion of, of Ben Bernanke and his helicopter talk, because if, if, if the, if the Fed is determined, or if the, if the monetary powers that be are determined that there's going to be more consumer spending, uh, when people are, 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 are up to their limits on their, on their, on their credit cards, uh, you know, you, you, you just give them money. And the Swiss are talking about doing just that right now. You just give them money. I mean, that's more or less what they're doing with the banks now anyway. They give them money for zero, and the banks are free to then go and speculate. That's why the stock market is where it is, because banks can get money for nothing. Right, and that makes it appear as though the economy is flush and people feel that wealth effect and all that sort of thing. And that's another question to follow up from our beginning is, what is this? You see, everything you've been describing uh, is about the the mechanisms, the impacts, that sort of thing. What can you infer from these symptoms as what's going on behind the scenes that's, what is this covering up? What is this compensating for? Oh, well, you know, historically, when historically when when money policies of, of central banks or governments were loose, uh, the first thing that you'd expect to happen would be a, would be a very, very sharp rise in the price of precious metals. Because you see, interest rates and precious metals are historically linked right at the hip. 
and 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 they they you know they they play off one another and there are historical relationships uh you know with, let's put it this way given given what's occurred in 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 the in the interest rate arena and in the and in the money printing and the expansion of the fed's balance sheet and, and the and the expansion of money supply given what's occurred in those arenas what should be happening is the price of precious metals should be going up dramatically. And that's been capped or curtailed or suppressed. And, and one of the ex-Fed governors, Kevin Warsh, uh, referred to it as financial repression. And if anybody wants to read about what Mr. Warsh actually said publicly about that, Google Kevin Warsh and financial repression. You can read what he said about that. And uh, Kevin Warsh actually said that, you know, there's a job for us as in, as in the Fed or the central bankers to do in the area of financial repression, effectively if they see results in the market that aren't to their liking. And let me, let me say it in, in very plain, vanilla, simple terms. Central bankers, uh, uh, rising metal prices aren't to their liking. Never have been and never will be. And this is why the price of gold has been financially repressed. And, you know, one of the biggest disservices that has ever been done to mankind is our fourth estate, our financial press, and, and, and mainstream analysts who supposedly have educations, supposedly from reputable, finan or from reputable universities and, and educational institutions. And these people have derelict in their in their fiduciary duty to report the truth and to, and to report the facts and to say and I mean listen some of them may not get the the, the extent to what's going on but there are some that do and there's got to be quite a few that do and they remain mum and the reason they remain mum is they don't want to lose their jobs they don't want to be fired and they don't want to be uh, castigated as uh, you know the, the nom de plume uh, conspiracy theorist, which is which is the equivalent of telling somebody that they they've got Ebola, or so or so the powers that be would like us to believe, and this this is this couldn't be further from the truth, because this this you know, you know the games that are being played in the precious metals market, trying to hide, trying to hide the natural outcomes. Uh, of these uh, of these malfeasances that have been conducted in in our financial capital markets, uh, the, the, these don't have good endings. They'll have horrible endings, and it doesn't matter how much financial repression, uh, as Mr. Warsh referred to it as, it doesn't matter how much financial repression that they employ, the outcome will will be uh, will be catastrophic for them. And, and uh, all they're doing is delaying the inevitable outcome and ensuring that the inevitable outcome will be much more difficult on humanity than it needed to be. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I, I want to say and be on the record that the, the actions that have been undertaken by, uh, you know, I'm speaking of the 2007 time frame when Hank Paulson, I call him Hacksaw Hank, when, when old Hacksaw was the uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary and Ben Bernanke was the, was the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, and that's not to let Greenspan off the hook or, or, or previous Treasury Secretaries because they were all engaged in the same type of activity as well. But these people all deserve to be dragged into the, the, the world criminal court in The Hague, and they need to be put on trial for for high financial crimes against humanity because what they have done cannot be excused by wrapping themselves in the flag or say that they were doing it for, for, for national security or they were doing it for the country and for the good of it. Because what they've done, what they've done in a financial sense is more egregious than what Hitler's officers did when they were tried in Nuremberg and when they tried to claim that they were following orders. And following these kind of orders, when when they are when they are this detrimental to humanity, uh, uh, deserves to be dealt with in the sternest possible way. 
And that brings us to the question of what in the world can the average family do, given all that you've described, to take steps that are going to help protect themselves from being wiped out by whatever this catastrophic effects that are coming? Well, in a, in a financial sense, uh, you want to own things that are real. And at the front of the real category, I'd put physical precious metals. My preference would be to own coins or small bars. Uh, I don't think you can own enough of them. And and, and, and as I do know, what, what you're all about is, uh, uh, Dunnigan, is, is, you know, the whole prepper theme. You know, think think in terms of the government not being there. Think in terms because at, there will come a time when they're not, or the services that you're that you're dependent upon today might very well not be. And so think in terms of being able to produce your own water, maybe with a you know some sort of a water filter, maybe some storable food, and maybe a means to protect it all. And from there, I'd say you want to really think about knowing your neighbors and building a, a sense of, of community locally. Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, guests on the show talking about that last point about that it's important not to just have like a bunker mentality, but to really connect and reach out to people because you're going to be de needing to depend on the people who you're close to uh, because these large central services are not going to be available. And... Um, any other perspectives from your standpoint on is uh, in addition to to acquiring silver and gold precious metals in coin form and and stocking up on these basic life necessities that sort of thing from a self education standpoint or um, ways of reaching out because it's really challenging for people when it feels like when you're trying to get yourself get your head straight and get yourself sane that you're basically uh, having to you're being your own thoughts when you're trying to think straight here are being drowned out by what you're hearing from official sources that are telling you everything's fine, you, you know, unemployment rate is dropping, interest rates are are good, the stock market's up, um, everything everything is is okay. But but people who sense that that's not the case, um, how can they keep their information uh, clear and and help each other? Well, I would I would recommend or suggest that. Uh you know, all the listeners should do what everybody else is doing and watch less of CNN. Uh, and I mean, these and, and MSNBC and the, all the mainstream media outlets, because these people have, have shown that they're that they're treasonous and traitorous. And they've shown that they have no interest in reporting the uh, port, reporting the, the, the real state of affairs. And their their uh, you know, their 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 ratings uh, reflect this in spades. Because we've seen in the last few months, we've seen uh, MSNBC and CNN dropped from uh, uh, major, major cable operators. And, and, you know, and the reason the ratings are at zero is because everybody knows what they're, what they're saying is, 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 is lies or it's propaganda for, for, the, uh, you know, for, for, the, for the ruling elites and the people with the agendas. And I'd, I'd, uh, I'd recommend anybody to... Uh, you know, take in take in a good sampling of alternative media, and there's lots of good alternative media outlets out there. You know, they, some might not be to everyone's liking. I mean, you you know, you've got a good site. Uh, your son has a good site. You know, and uh, but you know, but there but there are many others. And whether whether it's whether it's uh, you know, they're, and they're and they're few and they're sorry, they're not few. They're they're they're, they're plentiful on the internet. There's quite a few, and. Uh, and 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 the and the other thing I'd say is seek out like-minded people, and discuss and talk, and uh, and remember that uh, 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 knowledge is power, and there's power in knowledge. Well, I think that's about what we set out to accomplish. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we let you go as insight to our listeners? You know, it's uh, boy, what else to say to top all that off? You know, like here's the thing: don't want anyone to think. That you know, I've had people say to me that the material you cover is very dark. I, I don't view it as dark. I, frankly, what I what what I actually view as dark is walking around not knowing what's going on. Ignorance and denial. Yeah, rather than it's illuminating. It's the opposite of dark. It's illuminating. Yeah, uh, Dunnigan, I find I find knowledge very empowering. And the only thing I'm really scared about is the unknown. 
And moving forward, I, I see I see tough times coming, but I don't feel uninformed. And I take solace in that. Rob Kirby from KirbyAnalytics.com. Thank you so much for being here to join our audience and uh, share your information with them. If they want to find out more from you, where can they find that? You can find me on the web at KirbyAnalytics.com. And Dunnigan, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much, Rob.